morning guys. Uh, I was sitting at home drinking coffee this, uh, eh, I'm not going to call it fine, but Saturday morning. And no, it's a Sunday. Hmm. COVID. Um, I'm like, okay, I'm bored. Let's, let's go do something. So ideally, um, I would have liked to take the 87 IS up here from the other garage and start going on getting that Super Ada that I will say refreshed. It's definitely not a rebuild because I didn't do bearings, but other than that, everything else was done on it. So I really want to get this installed in that car. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But I went down there on the little electric scooter this morning, and a bunch of snow has come off the ridge of the roof. And there's like two feet of just iced over snow, so I can't get at any of it. Um, but the E46, you know, after doing the clutch on the other car, was still sitting here. So not quite as much snow out in front of this garage door. And I was able to get with these brand new summer tires over that little ridge and get the car in. So my plan for today is just remove enough of the stuff so the car isn't drivable. So I have to finish it. Um, but the plan is to get this thing slotted in. Uh, eventually I will be doing forced induction of some kind on this engine. Um, if you guys remember, uh, the story, this engine came from one of my best friends down in Texas from that little trip we did over the summer. And it's a pretty much no expense spared, fully forged thousand, twelve hundred horsepower capable, whatever S54. It's got L19 studs, um, H beam rods, forged pistons. Everything's been blueprinted, knife edged. Uh, cylinder head, I think is actually still stock. Really didn't need to do any work. These are really good cylinder heads. You can tell by the little, uh, dash 10 bung down there that this thing was turbocharged. It dynoed at just over a thousand horse before it was removed. Um, my goals are nowhere near there. Uh, my plan is basically probably, I would really like to do a supercharger, but unfortunately there's only one company that does intercooled supercharging, which is VF, and they want like eight and a half grand for their kit, which is not happening. So um, first step is going to be finding somebody that can tune an MSS 54, because I have no desire to run a standalone on this car. Uh, I really like the stock DME, and I think it's well capable of doing forced induction stuff. So there are a couple of companies that do it. So I do need to look into that, but I probably will end up turbocharging it. Uh, with a pretty small turbo, probably even smaller than is on Brexit. And then I'll probably be running like three to five PSI. I, I really, I have no issue with the speed of that car as is. Um, maybe I'll crank it up here and there. I, I don't really know. Um, I've seen every time I've turbocharged something except for the Hunicorns, it has just ruined the car. When I look at Brexit, I'm like, this car was great with 100 horsepower and it completely blows ass now. So I, I don't want to ruin the car, but I mean, I could run probably six, seven pounds on this thing forever and it would be just bomb proof because this thing is designed around like 25 or 30 PSI. So either way, I have it. I know like the rod bearings have been done. It's got ARP studs in the very... Uh, uh, rod hardware in the bottom already. In fact, I've got another set of bolts and another set of rod bearings here that came with it. So I'll probably end up <clears throat> looking at these, maybe throwing them in there. The LSB, if you guys haven't been watching long enough, this car I bought, I think, two and a half years ago. It has 197,000, I think, miles on it. Getting close to 200. Had a lot of rust. So I've addressed all of the rust now. I've had multiple parts of the car just completely cut out and replaced um, but I bought this car because a late friend of mine had an identical 2001 M3 Laguna Seca blue on black leather with the ZCP wheels. And when he died, his shitty family took it and squirreled it away in a garage somewhere instead of agreeing to sell it to me. So when I found this thing, I couldn't say no. Um, the S54 that's in it, I believe is original. I have no data on it at all. Uh, it's leak free. But uh, I was going to do bearings on it anyway next year just because, I mean, look at it. <laughs> it's it's in great shape, but it's clearly done all the miles. So uh plan is to pull that thing out, and then eventually I will probably stab it in some other car. Um, but, you know, may as well just have a known quantity in there, especially because I have the engine anyway. And part of the deal of me getting this engine was not allowed to make money on it. So it has to go in something that I'm actually planning to keep. 
the first thought was actually shove it in the 30 m3 but that engine is just beautiful and there's no way in hell i would ever do forced induction on that car so this one maybe um but yeah sorry for the monologue but that's kind of the plan so today i'm just gonna try to immobilize that car so i can't drive it off the lift and then once that's done i will have motivation to uh, finish it up but since i did a clutch on one of these less than a week ago it's all very fresh in the mind not that i needed it to be because i know what the hell i'm doing on these but yeah um so far i've just pulled the uh, splash trays off i did find a little mouse nest on top of the engine which was pretty cool um but i'm gonna next up go with the midsection then i'll pull the rear section i'm gonna leave the back box in uh i will be pulling the trailer hitch off probably just because i don't need it right now and then after that, I'm going to go through and pull the transmission, and then we will be pulling the engine top side. So it's just a little bit less invasive, less uh, chance of damaging the car. So, And I'm a little bit space constrained, constrained in here this, uh, this winter, but it should be okay. I've pulled engines out of the side before, and I'm not too worried about it. Well, I've got everything out uh, except for... I'm see the bolts on the top to pull the trans. Um, so obviously the car is immobile right now. I definitely can't drive it. Success. And I'm going to go upstairs and get some breakfast. Maybe I'll work on it a little bit more today, but maybe I won't. Either way, I now have to complete the job. So <laughs> job well done. Also, should probably drain the oil on the engine and do an analysis on it before I forget as I have never done a change on this car in the couple thousand miles I've owned it. Oh, so it's really not going anywhere now. <laughs> Everything looks pretty good, but uh, I'm just going to go have a beer with my buds next door. The old tech had a sense of humor, so that's good. And yeah, I'll pull this off and we'll rip the motor out. So I'm going to wheel the transmission out of the way, pull the pressure plate clutch flywheel off. Then I'm going to disconnect the engine ground strap up here and look around for a couple other little things, uh, as well as starting to loosen up all of the bolts on the air conditioning compressor. There are three. Taking the belt off of that, uh, undoing the stay for the oil cooler and drain the engine oil. Um, beyond that, I'm also going to pull the lower engine mount nuts on both sides to prepare to yank this thing out the top. There's obviously still a ton of top side work, but those are the things that people most commonly get tripped up on. So uh, that's my plan. Not gonna do a whole lot today, but at least wanna get something done every time I'm down here. And it's been, I think, five days since I was last down here looking at this thing. So. Let's do that. It looks like somebody's machined this. So maybe it's had a new flywheel. Um, the clutch disc looks perfect. Uh, and it's stamped OO. So I think it's the original clutch disc at 196K, which is still pretty much brand new. No hotspots. If they reinstalled the factory pressure plate, which is a huge no-no, it looks like they didn't. Looks like they did replace the pressure plate, but not the disc. Um, I have no comments, <laughs> but flywheel side, so. Um, anyway, yeah, that looks great. The flywheel looks really good. No hotspots or anything. Pilot bearing feels great. So I'm gonna rip this bad boy off. Like I said, undo a couple more things uh, under here just so it doesn't get snagged up. And then, uh, yeah, I may have to pull, I forgot about the headers. I may have to pull those to get this thing out nice and clean. Uh, kind of a sucky job to do in the car, but uh, with a support bar on the top and stuff like that, pulling the engine mount, it really isn't too bad. So we'll take a look at all that, certainly, when we're topside. But I just want to get as much of this bottom side stuff. Oh, yeah, there's electrical under here I have to disconnect, too, so I'll grab an 8 We'll rip that off. Fuel pressure regulator junk. So all just a whole bunch of steps. Uh, this comes with two on the engine harness, I believe. Eh, maybe not. No, the transmission stuff is separate. So, okay. Enough barbling. Let's take this off. 
Well, even the rear main looks really good. This car was clearly cared for. Cared for. Um, hard to tell. There is a dark red clear tinge to the oil. Definitely needed to be changed. Um, oil cooler. Started pulling that down too. There's actually no drain cock for the coolant on the M3, which is a little dumb. So I'll have to deal with that independently. Got my little riser to dump the oil out. I guess that'll start working on a lot of that other stuff too. I may work on the majority of the other lower accessories. Uh, top side, oops. But the ground strap's off. So by and large, we should be pretty good once this uh, drips down. So I'm back down slightly later because I don't want to go to a Halloween party. And the block drain is right up there. It's a 13. I've loosened it to the point where it's about to fall out, um, but I don't want to make an absolutely enormous mess. So I've got to the point where it's doing, you know, this much drippage, and I'm just going to let it drain overnight into the bucket here. So hopefully in the morning I'll have a bone dry block and I can do the radiator. I just hate making massive messes all over the floor all the time. Um, back when I was just hammering through cars in a scrap facility, and I had to clean the floor, deep clean every single time, whatever. But uh, not anymore. I don't really like to do that. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, I did get the engine oil completely drained out. Into there, took a sample, going off to Blackstone, as always. Every car, every oil change. So... Uh, I'm probably going to deal with some belts and some bolts down here in the meantime, but uh, yeah, after the block is drained in the morning, I will uh, do the radiator and then we'll actually for real go topside. So first few things, air box, air snorkel, starting to take the shroud off, clutch fan is removed, well, loosened, uh, reservoir um, ox blower air pump coil cover um, coil harness I undid but I left the O2 harness on all that stuff's over here uh, brake vacuum released put on top of the engine removed the bulkhead covers and the side cover here and I'm gonna get to the back uh, retaining bolt for the air box now and remove the dipstick nut as well after that, we should be able to remove the plenum very carefully, uh, releasing the oil drain on the bottom at the same time. Well, like pretty much every S54 ever, there's a big vacuum leak and the oil drain is not snapped into the um, bottom of the plenum. However, it's in otherwise very good condition. Really good considering the mileage. Um, so I'm gonna release the oil cooler lines start taking the accessories off, uh, releasing the water lines on the back, undoing the engine harness, and uh, just setting that on the engine itself. Then over here, I've got heat shields, secondary air valve, uh, water pipe, a couple things there. I still haven't removed the AC compressor or anything like that from the bottom. Still have yet to pull the radiator because there are uh, Torx bolts on the bottom as well. Noticing I'd really like to replace this. Um, everything looked like it had gotten extremely hot with how rusty it is. So maybe I can find a replacement for that or clean that up. But it was pretty much melting my trickle charger lead. Probably not good. But yeah, overall, not too bad. So between video segments there and the upcoming ones, I did end up swapping out the engines. It's one of those things where I didn't really want to work on it, but... I started doing one thing and then it led to an empty engine bay, which I promptly uh, at least sprayed some degreaser on and hosed out. Uh, it looks a little bit better now, but still not great. I got the new engine in, got the old harness on it, had to swap a few things over, but it sits in there, looks good. I got it all plumbed up, transmission's in, and it's pretty much ready to fire up minus oil coolant and a radiator, which I'll get to in just a second. But yeah, there's its new home and this thing is sweet. Hello everyone. Uh, quick update before I walk over back to the blue M3. Uh, I've been dealing with a lot of side projects like my brother's TV broke so I had to fix that for him and 
I was electric converting my Brompton here because the switch kit showed up. Uh, if you guys want to, if you have any interest in cycling or electrification, uh, check out Ovalbore Tech. I have a second side channel. It's on there. Um, but anyway, I had to prep a lot of stuff. I had to get uh, the pan torn off and all the conversion stuff taken off my K24 because I actually drove up to Northeast Michigan over the weekend. Um, I was going to go up and work with Classic Daily on the E10 swap kit. Unfortunately, on my way there, when I was almost all the way there, uh, we had a, uh, a bit of a, I'll say a COVID scare with uh, somebody near to the shop there. So I opted to just drop off the parts in the beer and come back around. So there will be more on that swap. Uh, head on over to Classic Daily's uh, YouTube page on Monday the 16th. You will see uh, me via Skype joining them. There's also two prior backlog days, so check all that stuff out. But anyway, if you're not interested in that, back to the Blue M3. So I didn't take a whole lot of video throughout the process because this is very much one of those projects where I work on it when I'm motivated and the motivation doesn't come easily. So when I start just forcing myself, maybe I'll plug in the ECU and then it ends up, you know, I put the engine in. So this is the old engine, 196,000 miles, runs like a top, really, really nice. I'm not sure what this will end up in just yet. I'm obviously going to clean it up a little bit just so it looks nicer, but it needs nothing. So that's just going to get uh, uh, oil fogged and put away. Um, I did damage the radiator pulling it out just like I did with my silver vert back in the day. So new cheapo aluminum radiator is due in today. I did order a brand new OE clutch kit because although the disc, which is original, um, looks really good, it is a self-adjusting pressure plate. I also have an FX850 twin disc. Uh, since I am not yet going to be forced inductioning this car, that is going to sit out this round. Uh, stock clutches are really good on these. They're able to handle 400 horsepower without any issue too. But uh, the new engine's in. Uh, mounts are all tightened down, transmission's in, clutches in, drive shaft's in, exhaust isn't on yet, obviously no intake or anything. I'm not going to go much further until I get the radiator popped in just because it's a lot easier to put the radiator in with all the adjacent accessories, even the expansion tank still out. Uh, I also only have two liters of oil here, so I have to grab another jug from my home, but it's been sort of a cathartic experience. I don't know. It's been kind of fun. I haven't done a full-on engine swap in a little while. And I'll be doing that M20 in my IS shortly after this. And then hopefully the K-Series in the 2002 shortly after that. So lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff going on. It's winter. Um, fully, fully on now. So lots to do. Um... But stay tuned on the on the channel. Certainly, I'm still making contents, just a little slower these days than, than normal. I don't really want to shove out uh, a video that I don't think is at least a little bit watchable. So there is that, but thanks for sticking on. I'm going to throw this one up today just so you get the note about the Classic Daily live stream tomorrow. Uh, Jake's a great guy. We've been friends a long time, and uh, definitely head on over to his channel to watch me shoot the shit with them while we finish up the K-Series stuff.